Hey, Ginger, you want to go for a ride? She thinks we're going for a ride. We're not because it's broken. So today we're going to fix this. The charging system's not working. Very common problem on these Yamaha Rhinos, but a lot of ATVs because the charging system's way undersized. So what we're going to do is actually take the charging system from something like this. A Ford 1G first generation alternator. And we're going to adapt it to fit in here. Looks like we have room. Nobody's ever done this before. I'm going to do it, bring you guys along, see if we can do it. Three times the power output should never have problems in the future. And if the alternator goes bad in the future, it's easy to replace where this one, the stock alternator is completely built into it. So let's play around so we can take Ginger for a drive, right? Let's go. Okay, the stock alternator is actually under this down here. So on this side of the motor, we have actually like a fan. And what this fan does is it actually just blows down a little pipe and blows air underneath the bed and across the muffler. I think just to keep heat down a little bit back there. It's a teeny little opening. It's not big, but there's another one on the other side that's way bigger that blows air across. So kind of pointless on this same engine is in four wheelers and in four wheelers this is just a pull start as yeah, so you see this fan just blows out this little teeny tube so guys will take this off and they'll put a recoil start down here just as a backup so not a big deal I can, I'm not afraid of the mechanics of this of replacing the alternator in here but it's teeny you know the alternator in here only puts out about 20 amps I think maybe maybe 23 something like that but that's just if i do that i'm just going to run into the same issue with a too small of alternator so let's take this off and all i have to do is take this right here and then i bought a pulley there's a random one off amazon that looked about the right size and we just have to mount this to there and then we have a pulley that will spin and then i have a nice alternator size hole right back here that I think will hold an alternator nice and good it's going to be probably a um, foot and a half off the ground just right there get it right right in that big old hole back there and if I have any issues I can just replace an alternator okay we kind of lucked out this metal backing plate right here about an eighth inch thick this is um, this is actually behind the fan and then bolted to this little thing you see two holes are threaded opposite sides two are not but this little thing fits perfectly in this hole in this pulley you know and now I can line up the holes and I can easily drill them I mean it's it's like a perfect fit in there don't you love when stuff works out I mean maybe there's like a, a 30 seconds of a gap just kind of center that took a little trial and error and I just tucked in the lathe just to see if it spins true but we're spinning true problem is there's actually just enough slop in the bolts to move this around where it doesn't spin true so i don't know okay i took a few attempts and but we got it now the issue is is i guess this thing is hard as crap so i can't actually tap that to put a bolt through that side so i made some pins and I'm going to weld those to the pulley and just stick them through. So they'll just kind of locate it. You know, it'll act like a bolt kind of. It'll keep it from twisting. And so I'll just be able to pull it out and just weld the head of it. So those are welded in now. So they just slide over. And then you put the bolts in these other two holes. And we use this washer if we want. So I made this cardboard template. This is where the engine sits. This is where their alternator is going to sit. Um, cut it out. Now I just cut it out of quarter inch steel. I left this leg off and I might also have to set this back. Like it might have to set in just a little bit to better bolt to the alternator. So we'll see. But now it's still hot as piss. Break it free. Here we go. All 
Okay. Just trying to line up the holes. Um, I guess these four holes right here. So this is clocked correctly. I can't have it sitting too high, too low. But everything's going in there good. The pulley sits like flush. The belt should sit down in there a little ways. A 3 8 belt. This is probably actually meant for a larger belt than that. But it doesn't matter. The groove is the same. Come down here. You can see the top tab and the bottom tab and everything looks like it'll fit. Okay, about 13 trial and errors and we have it bolted where it needs to go. Got six bolts in there. There's actually like this bolt. I actually welded this back on. This wasn't even used in this application. Neither was this one down here. But we got a bunch of bolts in there. Now we can just swing the alternator in. I'll drill this bottom hole first right here. And then we'll just swing it so we because we got to cut the swing groove over here really close to hitting this bracket down here but i think i can just notch it i notched a little bit i can notch a little bit more it's not touching but i don't know how much the motor shifts under acceleration if it goes up or you know if it like rocks down or if it rocks up okay i welded that on at a step so it needs to step back because I need this pulley recessed a little bit. I need it about right there. But I didn't do it to the top. Maybe I will. Probably will. But Or I could just put in washers up here. So now I just have to cut out the slot so this can slide back and forth. But this is actually uh, spaced back further than down here. You can't really see, but you see there's just a little bit of a, probably about, about an eighth of an inch. The aluminum sticks up on the face, but if you come up here to this, it's just flat. What do you think? Is it gonna work? I don't know. In the roughly 75, there's a bunch in there too, fan belts I have. I do not have the right size, of course not. So let's, let's order one, but in the meantime, I just made one up real fast. I actually have a video on this. You can kind of see my splice. So it's a Ford alternator. So we need a uh, voltage regulator and I have one sitting here in my truck that I know works this one's already been this trucks already been upgraded to a Ford 3G this is a 1G alternator uh, voltage regulator so we'll just pop this out and use this I mean this seems kind of old school but I mean newer alternators just have the same thing built in and so if this goes out the uh, whole alternator is bad where if this goes out, it's a separate piece. This is actually a better design, I think, but. So why would I choose like 60 year old technology to put in a more modern ATV? Easy, I have a bunch of these. These are extremely common. Ford used these all the way up through the 80s. They used them for 20, 30 years. And they're, they're everywhere, essentially, in my life. Maybe not in yours, but in my life. Here's two alternators that work. I think I have two more that even work. On standard, these put out 60 amps. The uh, stock charging system in an ATV puts out like about 20 amps. So this is three times what it needs. 60 amps is pretty small for like a car these days. And so they're not ideal for that. But an ATV, 60 amps is more than ample. So this is your voltage regulator. Generally, this is smaller. This is actually pretty small inside of here. But usually this is just built into the back of your alternator now. But super simple. 
you're like all this extra wiring why not just use a gm one wire alternator or something like else like that that's because i have this and this is just as simple you got four four terminals here okay you got an f just goes to the f on the alternator so straight over wire like field field no big deal you got a stator an s that goes to the stator terminal boom that's it you got a terminal here this is a this one's battery they both just go to the battery so all three of the main wires just go straight to the alternator that's it or where the alternator goes and then you have an i and that's just simply when you turn the key on that gets 12 volts power that's it you can put a light in between there and if this isn't putting out power the alternator's not charging it will light up the light so you can put a light or you don't have to but that's it the wiring's all the same i mean it's just like it's super it's as basic as a one wire or chevy alternator but that's it so i'll just set up all the wiring um and go from there okay the brackets all painted up not my finest work try to get it to the paint job to rush you can see it's not smooth but it doesn't matter anyway we're getting the wiring finished up um let's see so this was the original like one of the original plugs for the original um alternator stator so this would go up through up to a voltage regulator on the machine so i just reutilized the wiring so i don't have to run all new wiring there's no reason to because i'm bypassing everything so i used two wire this is actually three but i just used two wires out of there that's all i need and then up to where the voltage regulator would go there's this style plug right here so i just took an old voltage regulator right here and used the magic of the bandsaw chopped it up chopped everything out of it and now i use that to wire to my new new voltage regulator so that's that i'll finish covering up this wiring just a little bit better but so this will just plug into the stock harness and so will this so nothing adapts from the stock harness essentially i put a little bit of heat wrap around the muffler just right there it's not that close but just to help it and i've got my three wires connected one two three battery field stator field stator that's it it comes up and actually comes out of this plug right here so that will plug into my voltage regulator it is all wired up there's my voltage regulator except for the wire to the ignition we're just gonna jump with that for a second we can just jump with that to the battery cable everything is hooked up should be there's a voltmeter right here. Let's start it up. You guys can't read that. Hold on. It says 12.1. Okay, 12.1. Let's excite it by just touching this to the battery. thinking about it. Let me give it some revs. Nothing. I gotta play around with this for a minute. Okay, I had two wires swapped. Let's try it now. Uh, I know you guys can say 12.3, 12.57, six side it. 14 volts. Don't need the excitement generally anymore. Check that out. It's charging. Alternator spinning backwards from how it's normally meant to. It doesn't care. Sweet. So 
So I just brought in a wire that comes off of when the key turns on. So I don't know why you guys can't see this. Or maybe you can't. 14.1 volts. Not showing up on my camera very good. Button it all back up. I think we're done. Hey, unicycle. Somebody want to teach me how to ride it? Anyway, I'm missing this mud guard for uh, right here. I actually, this is from the other side, so it's folded backwards. So I've looked everywhere for it. I remember taking it off. I would have set it right up in here, but apparently not. So I'm gonna make a new one. Sucks. So any mud debris that gets thrown up by the tire is blocked by this. And unless your feet inside are under about three inches of water is when water would start touching here. So if you're halfway up your shin, well, that's about your ankle. This is uh, getting up to your shin. So I'll just attach this real fast and we'll be done. Stick? Oh, that's fun. 